No, I'm not going to sleep. Because I'm making this video. Um, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone. I'm not going to do anything. Leave. Monster. It's a monster. Say something. Hello. Hello. Monster. <laughs> monster. Leave me alone. No, we just need. Just leave. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Please. Because. Stop playing. Y'all go watch our Disney movie. No. Because it's monsters up here. And I mean for real. I'm not playing. Okay. <laughs> All right, bro. So look, man. I'm doing this video to talk about that right there with my little sisters, man. They bothering a nigga right now. But um, what's going on out here in America, man? It's it's a lot of bullshit, bro. It's a lot of fakery. You feel me? It's a lot of fronting. Not a lot of real shit going on, man. And I really came to talk about these, you know what I'm saying, the relationship between man and woman. So a lot of y'all, I seen in the comment section, y'all bothering a nigga about um this whole, you know what I'm saying, like women not texting back and shit like that. Well, that shit happens because society has put it in place for it to be like that. And... Just like, I can say, for example, when women do that shit, like, you know what I'm saying, I text them back, I block them, cut them all the way the fuck off, bro. It's no coming back from that shit. Because I don't play them games. But it be like the little girl mentality in females nowadays. That shit is so prevalent that it's sickening. And that's what turns a lot of these men into dogs out here. That's why a lot of these niggas become players. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not built for that shit, then you're going to end up being, you know what I'm saying, the simp or the one that keep getting. Like, let's, here's, it's a cycle of things, you feel me? It's a cycle of, like, yo, um, you get a girl number, right? And this girl probably talking to some, you know what I'm saying, of some nigga that's feeding her lies, the player. Feeding her lies. And she goes for it, even though underneath it all, she knows that everything you're saying is a lie. But yet she's still rocking with it. So she leads on, you know what I'm saying, going with her. He dogged her out, lied to her. She figured out every fucking thing is a lie. And next thing you know, she got this good dude that she's still talking to. What she'll do? Ignore him, play games with him, you know what I'm saying, do all type of trickery to not show up to him, show it. Show him basically that, you know, she don't fuck with him. And the whole time, dude keeping it thorough. He a good dude. Going to school, all that good shit. And that dude eventually turn into a bad guy. I mean, sometimes. He starts, he runs across a good girl. While turning into a bad guy. Won't even care. Because he think in his mind, all these hoes are saying, dog them all out. You feel me? And that shit, man, that shit is bad, bro. But, you know, they push for that shit, man. They push for that. And let me just tell y'all something, man. In this world, you got 90% of this world other than the kids. The kids is 100. Kids keep it thorough. But they get taught lies as they older. They get taught to be fake in the society. Talking about men and women. They get taught to be fake. So, 90% of these adults out here, these women, these men are fake snakes everybody claims to keep it real right you go on social media you see females liking rihanna posts to keep being unapologetic and 100 percent real and not lying and all this shit man these hoes fake as fuck bro all these females fake as hell nobody is keeping it 100 you if you go into um a relationship keeping it 100 bro man you're gonna come out looking like a fucking fool bro 
whole time they putting on a mask. They putting on a mask of who they really is. You know what I'm saying? And the crazy part about that is that it's not just the dating world, bro. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Corporate environment, like corporate work jobs. Niggas gonna keep it real on there. Niggas will get brownie points telling on you about shit or throwing salt on you to try to get brownie points and get a, a job or, you know, a higher raise or, you know what I'm saying? Management position, supervisor, lead, all that little weird shit. You feel me? That's the reality of that shit. In the streets, you got niggas, you know what I'm saying? Putting putting um salt on your game, making niggas think like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man, that nigga, man, he run off with work. You feel me? If you in the streets with a nigga, man, that nigga don't, you don't trust that nigga, man. That man do this. Man, he a robber. Man, that man gonna rob your ass. Man, don't do business with, bro. You know what I'm saying? All that type of shit going on. That's the streets. Niggas know, man. Niggas know. Or in school, you got all type of little bullshit going on. You know what I'm saying? You talking to a girl. Niggas in the class throwing salt on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, that man ain't loyal, man. He gonna dog you out. All that shit. Pillow talking, you feel me? That shit don't work either, the majority of the time. But you know niggas try it. Niggas try it. But a lot of the times, man, you just realize about this world, bro. You can't trust these motherfuckers, man. You can't trust them. All of them is fake. You're going to die early keeping it real to a world where 90% of the motherfuckers is fake, bro. <laughs> it's crazy. Look at all the black leaders that died, man. Keeping it real to a bunch of fake motherfuckers, bro. And I don't like talking down on, like, you know what I'm saying, slavery and shit. Because I haven't experienced it. And I probably would have died before I would have experienced the full experience of it. And because of that fact of knowing that. But at the same time, I have to keep in mind that they were used as, like, breeding, you know what I'm saying, breeding tools. To where black men were just having babies with women that they probably didn't even care about. You know what I'm saying? They were mating them to make the biggest and strongest slaves and shit like, oh, you're a muscular man. She's a muscular woman. They got good physical features. We're going to make them mate. So he got kids that he probably want to see. And he probably not real willing to die knowing that his kids don't have a father or have the, you know what I'm saying, keeping hope alive to meet his kids. So I can't really talk down on like, you know what I'm saying, all oh, them niggas was weak for being slaves when I, I don't know nothing about the shit, you feel me? Or just being in that environment in certain situations where you can't say that, but the fact that they were put in chains, that's the part I don't like. Or, you know, just enslavement in general. You got to die before this shit happens. That's when I would have um, agreed to mass suicide. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of them had families already. So, you know, a lot of them were born into that shit. So it's a mind thing, you feel me? But for the 1960s, man, there is no fucking excuse for none of them dudes after the, you know, some Black Panthers got killed. They were supposed to stand up. They're supposed to keep getting knocked down. You want your people to stay. You know what I'm saying? Niggas gave up on a mission of what it was supposed to be. Basically. So when you see society for what it is now, man, just know that these niggas failed you. And you got to deal with what they didn't deal with in the 1960s. They didn't finish the job. Or the government finished the job without a doubt. You know what I'm saying? But it's like this, man. These women now, they're put in a position to be like that. They're put in a position to be ignoring motherfuckers and all that shit. But niggas still out here, you know what I'm saying? It's still a lot of individuals out here who play a lot of these women. But it shouldn't be like that. Because it's a lot of good dudes out here, man. Females is ignoring. Like, bro, t trust me, man. I was just in school two years ago. College. Man, there's some good black men out here. Niggas are going to school for engineering. Um, Niggas... Got dads that run companies, bro. You know what I'm saying? Got their own businesses. So, man, they, they can't find a good black woman, bro. They can't find one, man. I'm like, damn, bro. Y'all, y'all, they tripping out here. You know what I'm saying? And what be so crazy is that when these black men finally get on, I don't blame, like, a lot of y'all think that. I don't blame black men for picking other women, like other races of women. When they finally get on. Because guess what? When they in school, that Latino woman, that Latino girl probably be like, oh, he got a dream. He got, he on his goal. He on his mission. You feel me? He striving for it. And he working on it. I'm rocking with him. And their parents going to be like, oh, he's doing that? Rocking with him. 
You feel me? And he gonna fuck with black females no more. Because they didn't fuck with him when he was on his grind already in school. Going towards his goals. Black women, a majority of them. When they see you got something going on, like something good. They don't trust you. They don't believe you. They don't believe in you. And I'm finna tell y'all something real, man. My mama was a dream killer for her children. She's still a dream killer. And I think she hate men. She told me she did, basically. You feel me? But it's the nigga she chose. It's the nigga she chose. My dad was a no-good-ass gangbanger. You chose to have a baby with that nigga at 17 years old. You feel me? And then you chose to have a baby with another bum-ass nigga that I never fucked with at all. Me or my little brother. Now, for to tell y'all this, man. I basically, you know what I'm saying, taught my little brother a lot of the shit. You feel me? That I didn't get to learn. I had to learn through experience, but I wanted him to learn it from me telling him. I'm talking about my, you know what I'm saying, if I was, I was 17 years old, 17, 16 years old, my brother was six. And... I raised him because I seen that my mama didn't give a fuck about him. My, his dad didn't give a fuck about him. Didn't keep his hair cut. He didn't have good clothes. His shoes was always beat up. He was rebellious as hell. Didn't listen to no fucking body. So I come in the picture. I'm like, all right, I see he bad as hell. I'm finna go on, you know what I'm saying? I'm, you know what I'm saying? My mom told me, like, watch him, watch he go to the club and shit. Sat, at Saturday and Sunday club and shit in her 40, you know, Friday and Saturday clubbing and shit, she in her 40s, I'm watching my baby brother at home, I'm getting texts from females like, come through, come kick it, match some, smoke some, you feel me, little thought ass hoes, I'm turning them bitches down to stay with my little brother, my baby brother, so we up there watching Adventure Time and shit like that, and then during the weekdays, I'm picking them up from school at 2 p.m. on Manchester and Hoover because I didn't want him walking home from there. I'm knowing how that shit can be. When I was growing up, I didn't have no big brothers, no cousins to come pick me up. So I made sure that I, I was there for him, you feel me? We walking home from school and telling him. He running across the street without looking both ways and shit. About to get hit by cars. I'm telling him, look, goof ass nigga, come here. Other niggas, you know what I'm saying? Like parents and shit, they say shit like, get your dumb ass over here in front of everybody showing out. Just to show they got authority over them kids. Not because they love them. They're not saying that shit because they love them. They're saying that shit to show out that you got authority over them. I'm saying that shit out of unconditional love. Like, look, bro, come here. I don't want your goof ass to get hit in the, in the sky. You a fucking, you know what I'm saying, stick man in the sky flying around and shit. So I told the nigga, like, you know what I'm saying, like, listen, look both ways. He looked back at me looking like, nigga, shut your goof ass up, nigga. I ain't listening to you. So now I was like, all right, wait till we get home. I ain't even say nothing. All right, I just, I, matter of fact, I did say something. Like, all right, wait till we get home. So when we get home, he running in the backyard. Don't want to run in the house and shit, right? Don't want to run in the house at all. He running around the house looking at me and shit. I'm like, get in the house, nigga. I got you. We good. Come on. We just going to slap box when we get over with. We get it over with. So we slap box and shit. Whoop his little ass. You feel me? Slap him up real good. And he over there crying and shit. And I tell him, you tell mama, I'm going to beat your ass again. He ain't tell mama. You feel me? But not to the point of, you know what I'm saying, abuse or nothing shit like that. But it, after that, nigga started, you know what I'm saying, um, walking, looking both ways before crossing the street. And then after that, I told him, you know what, bro? Do your homework. We'll go to the parking hoop. Do his homework. Y'all like, all right, cool. Do his homework. we go to the parking hoop. Be up there for a good two, three hours. My mama like, where y'all at? We at the park hooping. Walking down Fig, stop at Irene's, get him some brownies, chips, soda, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And then we go home. He watch Adventure Time. Homework done. Everything good. So while all this shit is going on, right? He ain't telling my mama, you feel me? Like, I brought girls over the house and every fucking thing, bro. My little 17, seven-year-old brother didn't say shit, bro. I'm smoking in every fucking thing, you feel me? He seen a blunt in my hand. What is that? That we Nigga, it's nothing. He ain't tell mama. He tell him mama on my other little brother, though, because he ain't fuck with him. You feel me? <laughs> but, um, nah. So, all of this going on, I'm doing all this shit for my baby brother. You feel me? It's been times to where, I ain't going to mention it, but this whole time, I, everything was going good, bro. Next thing you know. One day, my mama just decided to snap. I'm 17 years old. I'm real close to graduation. Man, this lady decided to 
throw my clothes out the house, throw bleach on me and my clothes in front of the whole block, broad daylight, kick me out the house, and I'm tripping off this shit. And then, to this day, she act like it never happened. Like that shit never fucking happened, bro. And I went down a down, uh, you know, uh, a dark spiral after that. You feel me? A downward spiral. And I came up out of it again, but she act like it never happened. My auntie remember she picked me up that day, and she remember seeing the bleach on my clothes. You feel me? And that shit always stuck with me. Like, damn, is that fucking serious? Is that fucking serious? And then I talk, you know, I don't like talking to my mom, but I still do because I don't know, bro. I, I just don't know. But I got into deeper conversations with her, and what I found out is exactly what I expected. Man, she got a homegirl she she cool with. She say she don't even want, she got a, you know, her homegirl got a child now, like a four-year-old son. She told me, I don't even want to visit him. I said, why? Because it's a boy. I said, what's wrong with that? She said, I got three boys. I don't want to, I don't got time to be seeing no boys. <laughs> you know, I don't like seeing boys. I got three boys. And all of them bad. I told him, he going to be hell. I don't want to see no boys. I don't, none at all. None. None. I don't like them. I said, damn. I didn't say damn, but I thought to myself, like, yeah, okay. And then she also went on to tell me that she gave up on my, 13 year old brother just like she gave up on me just like she gave up on my middle brother you feel me this shit she say openly to us you feel me she was saying this shit to us when we was 11 Ben gave up actually you know what I'm saying just growing up in that environment knowing that shit I got kicked out at 12 too I man look shit not all peaches and cream you feel me but that shit always resonated with me like this motherfucker really hate, you know what I'm saying, her own fucking kids. A dream killer for real. And I was excelling at that time. Man, I was in homeschool and I was doing great, bro. I had plans of going to school. Man, look, bro. All type of shit was going on, man. And at that same time, I was still in the streets because she wasn't supporting no nigga at all. She didn't support my dream. She didn't care for him. Wanted me to below, be below her. And that's why I feel like the females that the black females that I run across, they got that same mentality, bro. They don't want you to excel. They don't believe in you excelling. That's what I mean to say. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy because I don't blame you niggas for dating outside of y'all race, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I just never I still won't do it, but I see why y'all do it. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all see. When I see men like Niggas that actually got, you know what I'm saying, them, um, a Becky or a Chung Lee, you feel me? Or, or a Jennifer Lopez type of woman, you feel me? One of them. Or Selena. Man, them niggas, a black man with them, a bad one, you feel me? Man, them niggas got their business straight, bro, and they wife doing something. And they wife in school for, for something, man, got a bachelor's in it, you feel me? It's not no bullshit. When them niggas get on, and they ain't fucking with black women at all. Underneath it all, they ain't fucking with them. Because when they was in school, high school, being a nerd and shit, being in middle school focusing, man, that shit was considered lame. But yet the white girls care for it. You feel me? The Latino women, they care for it if you wasn't in like an urban, like Los Angeles type or, you know, different areas, Puerto Rican areas and shit like that. But you know, it's crazy, man. Them niggas get on, they ain't fucking with them. But you know what the future will be for those that chase those hood boogers and shit. You know what I'm saying? Them thugs and shit. Man, they got places for them niggas. And them niggas putting on that front. You know what I'm saying? Living that lifestyle because they know that women are, are attracted to it. Man, them niggas getting jammed up, bro. Them niggas getting L's behind shit. Niggas is getting 20 years and shit. 20, 30 years, bro. CCA, private prisons. Niggas is getting work for labor. Five cents a day. You know what I'm saying? And them females that they thought that they were showing off for if they ain't got babies bound, which is they playing all along. Just have babies by these females and they allow that stupid ass shit. But you know, if they don't have babies, man, man, them females ain't staying loyal, bro. Them folk, them hoes sucking another nigga off, you feel me? And that same nigga probably did be in, in a relationship with them for four to five months before he do her wrong and 
or probably have a baby with her or have a baby on her by with another female or he cheat on her. You feel me? Same shit. Or he get locked up and do a lot of time. She got two niggas locked up right now fucking with some other nigga. She don't see the cycle of things. You feel me? Niggas is getting jammed the fuck up, bro. And this, the, um, when she in her 30s, got all them kids, been ran through by the city, smoked the fuck out, drunk the fuck out, didn't age well because she out here partying like that. Man, look, fucked up life for you, you feel me? Struggle city. Struggleville. Real shit. And ain't nobody gonna help them except some simp ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? But as time goes on, these niggas gonna learn, man. Dealing with these female bros gonna be harder on them. The, the system is set up for it to be harder on them in the future. It's basically like that, man. Anybody with eyes can see it. Anybody. I'm just putting my little sisters up on game right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't finna let that shit brainwash them like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's like that, bro. Shit is not a fucking game. So, yeah, man, I did this video because I be seeing y'all comments about females not texting back. Well, they do that because it's a fucking game to them. Females are, have a, you know what I'm saying, they have a maturing problem. Niggas say, oh, they mature faster than men. Well, they don't stay maturing. It stops. They still act childlike in their fucking mid-twenties. Females be 24 still acting like little girls. I'm telling y'all this for a fact. Playing little girl games. See, were you serious about your life and your goals, bro? For little girls, that shit turns them the fuck off. That shit makes them get away from you. That shit makes them ignore you. You know what I'm saying? Because... That'll make them change. They have to change all of that. They can't play them little games they was playing with you. So it will not work. You could be a good dude. That shit don't matter, bro. They want a goofball. They want a loser. That shit is not the business, bro. I'm about getting this shit done because I know how serious this life is, man. Man, look. I'm finna tell y'all young niggas something. If y'all still listen to this video by, then, by this time, man, look. Stay in school, focus, bro. If you a young nigga in high school right now, I'm finna tell you straight up. Guaranteed jobs. Doctor and most definitely a computer engineer like cybersecurity, network system administration, those things. But I'm finna tell y'all the process. Since nobody told me the process, nobody told none of my little brothers. You know what I'm saying? This shit's supposed to be taught to you by your parents in-house. Man, look. Do two years at Southwest Community College if you have one. Or you could do four years at a university if you're willing to take that chance. But after, like, you know, for, you know, find a good a school, a good school, first of all, you know. Get your grades right, you know what I'm saying. Get your GPA in order. Stay focused, man. Don't let these females knock you off your square because guess what? At the end of it all, they still chase around these. If they don't realize that their moms is, you know, miserable chasing behind thugs in their 30s and shit, 30s and 40s, man, it's bad for them. You feel me? Niggas want, they want to go that little girl route. A lot of these women in their 30s and 40s still be immature as well. So if they still want to play them games, bro, I'm going to tell y'all this, man. Go to school, man. And I mean that with, like, with, with all of what I'm saying, bro. Nigga, I was, I ain't even finna say that. I, I was a wild child, you feel me? I was just a wild child. But I ended up getting it together, like. 19, you feel me? 19, start getting shit together. But focus on school, man. Those two markets, like I said, computer engineering, you know, medical lab technician, first two years for an associate's degree, and then do two years at a university, four years medical school, then get your reservation. It depends on what, you know what I'm saying, what type of doctor you're becoming to be, you know what I'm saying, what you want to be. But you'll get um all of those Man, look, bro, it's a process, but you have to take that risk, man. It's out here, man. Make you some real cash, bro. Don't be out here playing. It's real money out here. People going to be dumb. People going to be stupid. People going to get. Just look at the church, man. People willingly give their money over. But God is supposed to be all loving and all caring. Yet it's people starving, but yet you giving your money to a church. And you probably broke your damn self. You know what I'm saying? Look at the the fucking... I ain't even finna mention it, bro. I'm not even finna mention it. 
People willingly do this, bro. Willingly. So when you get on, bro, this is why a lot of dudes, like, people don't see this, man. You know, women don't see this. But for you dudes that, like, that have good women, bro. Now, I have females come in the comment section and say, like, not all women are like that. I understand that. But for 72% of the women to be single mothers in America in black in the black community, that's not mentioning the ones that don't have children that are hoes out here. You feel me? Or the ones that's married and still, you know what I'm saying? It's bad. Oh, it's definitely bad. Let's not go there. Niggas li ni in these streets lived in Los Angeles, lived in Phoenix, Arizona, Glendale, Arizona, Peoria, Mesa. You feel me? Niggas lived in Los Angeles, Watts, Inglewood, South Central. Niggas lived in Memphis, a lot of other places. You feel me? Niggas seen these environments with these you know, black urban communities, bro. It's bad, nigga. It's bad. But yeah, I'm still keeping hope out here. You know what I'm saying? Believing in individuals. Not really believing, but still trying to, you feel me? Picking at their brain. All of them the same. You know what I'm saying? This is what turned niggas into dogs and shit. This type of, these type of experiences. I had it almost happen to me at 19 years old. But I say this, man. If you running across good women, if you got you one, bro, a good black woman, bro, man, that's wifey, bro. That keep it real, 100 from the jump. And don't switch up nothing. 